we collect data, those are the raw data, and we want to make sure that you could repeat all of the results that Max and Rand and Devon have been doing to get a final answer. So the man Max knows how to get along with one Devon along with it. He results never tell you only. Every second I draw. Correlate love Gia, correlate love Gia, 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 love so today, <coughs> we want to talk about inversion. We're going to work in two parts. One is a simpler problem. It's called the linear inverse problem. So now, inversion, inversion is the linear inversion is a line, a line down, a line down, but the inversion is. The reason for this is that it sets a complete understanding of the fundamentals of any or any uh, inverse problem. So, but I don't know the linear inversion is there. But the matter is what she can tell the inversion thing is there. So, by the time we do let it be, we are not let it be. We are not let it be. Accept the result. By this afternoon, you will be able to apply that to the 1D DC resistivity inversion. That we did in the park. The only way to enter the one D net one D one one D resistive time high time the inversion of now the only way to enter the park. So recognizing <coughs> that maybe the mathematical level of students is not very high. So the matter of the internet particular, I am not sure that they are not parallel, and that it is difficult to. Proceed quickly because of language barriers and translations. So, not to worry about that. The process let us know. My, 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 the process, <coughs> excuse me, of inversion is going from our data set that we have back to a a model we will call the Earth, an Earth model that would reproduce those data. So I data data so I got data table inversion so I got no the data you don't need don't be the process slow be the data to check be the by low be the mark the the media model what going into model the cool one not the cool yeah the low man the model got it the internet the goes up to the model the cool shit down before for inversion there are different types we talked about parametric Inversion. Parametric inversion. Let's look. 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 let We'll work with what is called <coughs> a linear problem. So linear problem, so look, so right, we say we'll only put that drop on, and put that drop in it. Let's look, I have a lot of math to play. And you will have an opportunity to do hands-on. There's an app for the linear inverse so, problem. Let's wait. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, me, because I'm not kidding. Me. And then we will do the DC inversion for one D. For DC, one D inversion, look, me. So how do we attack this <coughs> this this problem? <coughs> Excuse me. We have some data, and we might process these data and get them ready for inversion. So up to my zone, the measurement of the entire data array, data cards, right? The data is in the general inversion table to be processed. Right? 
when you collected data in the field, there were many things that needed to be done to the data to see which data were bad, to maybe smooth the data, to give you process data. So process data, yeah, but to go, you know, panels of the queen and my area, the data, the loser, the queen and my tiny, and the loser, and my eye for another way. Yama, the data, and my bed, the data, come, the bed, the data, 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 so we want to take those data and we want to invert them to find a, a model. So now so, you know, and I did that invert lobby, inversion lobby, so now so, the model what the, we are sending them another video, and I have to learn to learn about it. The way we do this mathematically is to take our <laughs> Earth model region and yeah. divide it up into cells each of each cell has a constant physical property. Uh, the model go the the challenge in that case, the model go close up. Bye bye, quite big. So we have the three and only the three and only. We have my the the no one like you, but now by she the number she the job to protect me. In the general inverse problem for DC resistivity, each of these little cubes would have its own resistivity value and we would want to adjust what those resistivity values are so that we reproduce the data. So the the tema the tongue the tongue the 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 we're going to set this problem up as an optimization problem where we find a solution by minimizing something. So the how that is drop here, shall we? The cuckoo, the 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 now here, shall we? Come on, oh short chart, and the last short chart, we drop only. Ah, a short chart, and then oh here, shall we? Come on. The difficulty is that the number of cells that we have in the, our mathematical description can be very large. So a cell is about it, the things have in any other. So maybe we've got a hundred thousand cells or a million or ten million cells. So the cells, the cells are quite a quite a million people in about it. A quite a lot of them are so if you, the thing, the other view, the thing, the other, the other, the other, the other, the other, the other, the other. So we will always have more cells than we have data. So the cells are the, uh, you mean the block, right? Yes, yeah, so we'll have more cells than so I, we have. Remember when we talked a few days ago, we talked about non-uniqueness, and I said, well, what would you do if you had two uh, model parameters, x and y, and the only thing that you knew was that their sum was equal to 1? The negative, the negative, the negative, the x plus y equal to 1, so really, and I do one behind you, you know, here I'm going to tell you, you know, so I look here, you know, this is the non-unique, look, you're our one, non-unique, the low one, the math, the exact much of that, I love you, you know. So we have more unknowns. Let's so m in this case the number of unknowns is equal to two, and n the number of data is equal to one. Umaje ma mati de ke ni na na tamu di ni chete n ni tamu di ti chete umma tamu ni ba no. So we're solving a problem in which there's more unknowns than there are data. That means that the inverse problem to solve it and to get a solution actually requires some other information which is called here prior information. Prior information, look for it. A cha cha do chelle de le luare. Invention look de kama. So that 
information is sometimes geologic information. So, for instance, suppose the geology one in one dimension. So, if this is depth z, and here's our resistivity. <coughs> Suppose that we're out uh, in the park, right? And we expect that the resistivity might maybe go down, you know, something like that. So here's depth and here's resistivity. So there's a low resistivity zone, a high resistivity zone. We're expecting something that looks like that. So that general yeah, <coughs> so we can try to find a a solution that has got this character. We would not want to have a, a solution, let's say that Looks like this. So we, both of these might fit the data, but one is just, is not geologically acceptable. So the data will fit both of them, so I'll be graph, I'll be paying both of them, 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 so the kinds of information <coughs> that you might have are that if, if we go into, so let's suppose this is, well let's do it again, suppose this is the, if this is the field uh, area in Aung San Park, right? Uh, maybe, you know, this is a hundred ohm meters, and, and maybe you think, oh, the, the, the model should generally lie between, you know, 50 ohm meters and 300 ohm meters. But I think, you know, overall, I think that the resistivity should be maybe someplace close to 100 ohm meters. To, uh, oh, resistivity adi. So, yeah, mean na ma shi me pale shi shi me. So, we could call this a reference model. Reference model lo call a eh. So, we'd, we'd like to end up, we'd like to find a solution that was you know, maybe close to a reference model. Reference model, and this is all okay, we don't share much about it. So that's one thing that we could put in. The, the other is if you, if you had two options, if you had two possible solutions, one of which you know, looked like this, so that's one, and the other solution which look like this which one would you take so so general okay took them like in version of the camera but I'm not good to go now oh then you know if you need it why I'm here not good at it I'm going to like fit how I got a lot I live with that that's at the chance of sitting at the best solution you have to wait to get it because it's simpler it's Whenever we do inversion, we try to find a solution that has got the minimum amount of structure uh, that still fits the data. So data only fit me. Fit below or structure only for me. Nasal more. Show two in the hammer for that. Show two more nasal. Those are you are much better. When we do the inversions, there's going to be opportunities to try to get this particular 
result here compared to this one. I, I cannot see. Oh, sorry. Sorry. So we're going to set the problem up so that we can attempt to get these smooth solutions in co contrast to things that are just have too much wiggliness, too much structure. So all of that is going to come into this part here, the a priori information. <coughs> so in the notes, uh, I'm going to talk about the statement of the inverse problem. Uh, we're going to talk about data misfit. We're going to talk about something that's called norms. These are just mathematical entities that tell us the size of something. So, so the these statements are really similar to the inverse problem or similar to the data misfit or the data fit the data and the data fit 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 the norms fit the norms fit the data fit the data norms the data norm is a way, I'll talk more about it, but it's a way of measuring the, the, the size of something. So we have norms for measuring height. Right? So we have a ruler for, for measuring height. Right? So I could come along and measure everybody's height. That's that's kind of like a norm. Norms are got the kuku tai ta mu le la bo. Ma so o ya tai me so ba ne pi jiu dai pi jiu dia le ba le bo le tai ta jin ta ku norms jiu. I ba di ta xin jia ba me na na san to ti xi. We go through a Tikhonov inversion and then I'm also going to give you a flow chart which is useful for every inversion that you do. So, we a flow chart be me flow chart ma da lo look at the mia and look the bono tell you a flow chart be ba me bro techno uh, techno uh, approach we let them ma me So here's our statement of the inverse problem the inverse problem inverse the na ye statement ba So we're given observations d and maybe there's n of them. So this is like D1, D2. So we have a string of n observations. So these are general general values, right? Observations, which is, which is we collected one, the collected data. Yeah, that's our collected so data. We have to do this, we have to do this, we D observation, but observed data. And we're given some estimate of their uncertainties. I want to stress that a number, a geophysical field number that doesn't have an uncertainty attached to it is incomplete because we need to know not only the number but we need to know the error bar. So I uncertainty the error bar I do physics, my time car, and nobody. You have a good job, I came up your room, you know. I uncertainties ready, error will tell me to go say no. Do you have my mom hope for no? The model that we are looking for, we're just going to write as a generic symbol M. Generic symbol M, look on my head. And then our forward modeling is we've got some operator, some computer algorithm that opt, operates on that and generates data. I did that generate the data of the bureau. Oh, the process look to talk me have no? So what modeling, another word for more for modeling is? Uh, uh, simulation. simulation. So forward modeling, simulation. Process data. No, no, predicted data. Predicted data. So I forward modeling in general, don't you know your heart, they the nearly. Forward modeling data, oh, camera actually, what? Oh, observation data, so here is a linear problem. Uh, do not be too afraid of the integral. I'm just going to make the following. So the m is the thing that we're interested in. And, and, the, and the d is the data. And these things in here, the, they're called kernel functions. Kernel function. 
Yeah, they, they tell us about what the experiment is like. <laughs> and we're going to refer to the D as data. M is the model. M ga model ba. And G is the kernel function. G sub J is the kernel function for the J data. So G is the kernel function. Look, don't you worry. In the app that you'll use, this is distance along this way, and this is amplitude. Uh, amplitude of the model. So this is the model, and that's just. Amplitude be the number. Yeah. So this is x. X can go from zero to one. X so as zero and one, you don't have to worry about the way away. And here is the the model. It's got you know a box car and then maybe a Gaussian type. I'm a Gaussian type. Both are related to me. Both both are related to me. I'm not like that. And the first datum or the first kernel function, let's suppose, looks like that. You can control that, but let's suppose it looks like that. Kernel function at the level of the new. She did a little bit of a look. Come on, see that me. The datum. Associated with this model, this model is simply the product of these two things, and then summing them up. Uh, is that the? So we take this. This goes from zero to one. Uh -huh. So if we overlay this on this, <coughs> multiply them, and sum the numbers up, that gives us the value of the data. So I know you found it all. But do you tell me as a body? I can measure the the data here. You tell me. Then go tell me about it. Oh, what happened there? Okay. Shoot, these were supposed to be gone. Okay, so I'm going to draw up the, the linear inverse uh, app. It's, it's going to look like this. I'm going to give you a demo first. The linear inversion app will demonstration for not yet that they will modify. And then. Uh, yeah. So this is the linear in inversion app, and I'm going to start it by restart complete because I've been running it, and I will. I'm going to do a run cell all. Run all. Yeah, going to run all. Are they ready on the computer? Uh, they can watch first. Okay. See. So there is uh, material at the beginning of the app that talks about the purpose. It talks about the forward modeling that we that we do. Uh, we'll come more about it later. But these these kernel functions are kind of uh, oscillatory. They go up and down like that, but they can still they still decay. So I well, that the two of us can enjoy the kind of nature that the two of us may. And that the blue dollar is line, the blue dollar is good. Now the tele 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 line goes the dollar is good. So if you you are in the dollar is good, then you need dollar is good. So for for our kernel functions, they tend to look like this. So this is zero to one, and then the blue one starts at zero at one, a value of one. And it just gradually de decreases. So, yeah, I'm just not feeling it. So, show, show us in the right form that you can have the body. 
So we'll come back to that. That this is not so important, but we need an example. So this is what I'm choosing. So we're going to set up the the experiment, which is n, the number of kernels. N, so the kernel yet the data bar. So that will be the number of data. M. M is yeah. So n is the number of data, which is the number of kernels. And then the data yet number yet job of an associate as well. Okay, amen. Now we're going to take this region, 0 to 1, and we're going to divide it up into 100 cells, each of, well, 100 <coughs> equi sizes. The cells in Nyaya, the cells in Nyaya, the cells in Nyaya, the cells in Nyaya, the cells in Okay, and now, that's, that's step one. We'll, we'll, we'll come back to that, but that basically sets up the problem. The next thing is to uh, generate the model and simulate the data. So model go to generate the model and the process is to do the command and the data. So we have this set of slider bars here. So should we have a body to make? So M is, M background kind of tells you the level that you want to uh, have as a background. We're just going to set that equal to zero. Background sheet number, background zero. Oh, zero, what do we have to set zero for background? Uh, it, it's automatically set. So you can see that this is... Background is zero tarare. Yeah. Okay, now we want to make an earth model. So. This is the function here that we want to, to make. And the widgets up here will allow us to make this, this function. So in this particular case, we have an M, we have a box car. So that's what this, this is a box car, and then this is a Gaussian. So the first one is the box car, 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 the box car. If we wanted to make the box car bigger, then we could adjust the value here of M1. M1 goes on the street like a mother, right? Any box car goes on and put G1 as it's in the same body. So these three first parameters here are connected with the box car. So let's say yeah. So we can make it bigger. So we can make it two. Right? Two like We could make it minus one point three five. Minus two. Uh, yeah. So we could we could make it anything and we could also move it. <coughs> so if we wanted to shift it to the right Ali Ali both uh both go left. Should you have a should you have it? Right, so that these first three parameters here allow you to make something with a box car and move it around. But what was it though who uh the box car go back to shit is sweet. So the same is true with this Gaussian. We can make it bigger, we can shift it, we can make it skinnier. So I Gaussian Kafka like they have the arm she la arm bubble or G la arm little yeah. So if I wanted to make it uh, bigger, well it's already two, I could make it I could make it negative. I could make it go like this. So negatives in the upper tower, right? Or I could put it in the middle, and then I could, or the amplitude, I could make it, uh, I shift it over, I could put it over here. Yeah, she like that. I could put it right in the box car. Box car to tell you the I could put it back over here. I could increase the amplitude, and I could make it skinnier. 
Pemilik tuh ya, ambil lalu ya Make it like that Okay? So what this, what this panel does is allow you to generate many different kinds of models. And this is what we want to find. So our goal is to find this, and we're going to do that by first of all generating an experiment in which we collect some data <coughs> and then we're going to invert those data so there's a little button here called add noise add noise to yeah so we could, if we wanted to add noise to the data, here's 5% plus a floor 0.02. Imagine noise go 5% floor got 0.02. Right. So let's uh, let's go back to what our defaults were. So here here's our <coughs> here's our default. Let's unclick this. Now remember we had these, our, our physical problem which were these kernel functions. So each for each data, we're going to take the kernel function and multiply it into this model and, and get out of data. Kernel function, you will more So let's see then what the, uh, So I could, I could plot the kernel functions, I could plot the model, and I can also plot the data. Data let kernel let model let Okay. So those are the data without any additional noise. And you see the you know these are the data that you collect in the field, and they're actually fairly smooth. So don't do it, data <coughs> but generally, we will have noise on the data. So let's now add some noise to these data. So data manager, the we have the data, the noise power, by the table, noise detection. So we click this button. I'm a jambi rock, then I wrote add to me. Yeah, so that adds noise then that, that looks like this. And maybe for this example, uh, we want to even add a larger noise. Let's put oh, 10. Zero noise to the yeah, the same. Yeah, that's good. So here's, here's our data. And here's our, our noise. Noise uh, detector, error verified, no? Okay. So if we think we're going to fit the data, so you know, maybe any line that's kind of coming through here might be okay. Hey, line now, hey, error verified, the same as when they have a misapplied or missing, that if they don't fit the other way, they don't have Okay. So now, now we're all set to go. We've got our data. We understand our forward modeling, and now let's try to forward modeling is going to the command data is going to be there. It is a question. Yeah. A question? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, how do you put floor, 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 floor? Oh, uh, I just chose something. In when you go out with the instrument. Okay, for DC resistivity, uh, if your data are going to be voltages, then there's always some low random noise value that is happening, and so you consider that to be the floor. Uh, floor is like, it's, it's, it's not similar to noise. But yes, yeah, noise. You're trying to estimate what the noise. The floor is the kind of noise. So the floor, the floor is your estimation of what 
sort of the background noises. So background noise table, mm -hmm. background noise table, blushing is rather. Can manage. My boy, I bought something that's a flower, and I bought something that's a flower. My boy, I bought something that's a flower, and I bought something that's a flower. How they relate to flower and percentage? Oh, maybe not. So the floor, it, you can imagine a, uh, a, a dipole dipole survey, and then if the separation between electrodes gets to be large enough, then you know, you're just measuring uh, the background noise. So that's, that's your floor. So the floor is not a noise from your bedroom. So, uh, the Gabi, the channel is tied up on the TV, the noise is the banner. The percentage takes into account other things. For instance, if I take my uh, potential electrode, and it's my potential electrode is supposed to be here, but actually I put it over here, then there can be a big difference in my voltages. Just because I'm, well, there'd be a difference in my parasensitivity, excuse me, because I have my location specified incorrectly. So, the percentage of 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 the percentage so remember, so here was, here was our voltage, okay, that depended upon the, so here was the current going in here, and then here was the voltage. Remember how fast it decays? It falls off as one upon R. So the, the delay was saying one upon and you can make it voltage delay. Suppose that your electrode was supposed to be at 1.0 meters. 1.0 meter, my electrode time will do the watt high bar. But so it should have, you should have got that point here. But actually, you were out at 1.2 meters, which is here. So 1.2 meter, my target like that. So that's electrode. So this difference here, delta V. Could be maybe that's like five percent of what the true value was. So time and the she am a voltage ne. Kuna time and the am hotu piang ang ay kacaro voltage kam kuaro kuawa me kuawa ne kuaro kacaro. Ay voltage kuaro ra ne o o kuaro ra ba kuaro ra kacaro. Ay kuaha mo ko ba jero o lapasan kuam le lapasan kam le jero ato biro. Okay. So when you when you specify errors, then it's the error that you're trying to capture has often two different things. One could be like effects of positional error, uh, and also you have very large dynamic range in in something. For instance, voltages. This might be a thousand volts. That might be a hundred, and that might be one volt. So a small change in the location of where the electrode is can make a big difference. So I literally in the area, I don't know where I am. I am not sure where I am. And why you need a floor? Sometimes the data that you have, not apparent resistivities, but sometimes the data that you have for geophysical surveys. You might go like this. So boom, boom, boom. That is no reality. That is what we are talking about. And in particular, if you have a datum that goes through zero, and you have so the value uh, of five percent, for instance, for a datum that's at zero. So remember, <coughs> our our noise standard deviation. Was equal to a percent times the absolute value of the data <coughs> plus the floor. Standard deviation of your data plus the floor bound ne. Do that we have floor bound ne. Do a buy it. Do that we have floor. Yes, she had a data. It's a more percent than that. Percent than that floor plus the floor. 
So for this point I'm here, like, oh, <coughs> for, for this point, a percentage of 5%, you know, gives you something that looks like this. So so I'm I'm about that, like, you know? But for this 5%. point here, a percentage of 5% has no error bar. Zero, yeah, my zero. Oh, five percent, blah blah blah. Less zero, five percent plus or zero, plus or like that. I'm error bar. She go machine new. Error. Oh, do I? Then what? Ti ye? Error bar ne ti me po. Five percent of oh, the town, the town ye five percent or yai ye. The yai five percent or nei wara ko. Alu bok san ye. Five percent sura. Adi ti ne yai shi de. Oh, yai shi. Lekai yai shi de. Then what ye? Five percent or jira. Oh, floor plus ya. So always think about floor plus a percentage. This is perhaps one of the most important things to think about in doing inversion. Because, I'll come to it in a moment, <coughs> remember, I think it overwrite it, I think. It's not really yeah. Clear. yeah. We had our misfit Okay, which was the sum over all of the data are predicted minus the observed divided by epsilon i, our standard deviation. Standard deviation net yes I data kapayare data ne kamantai data na kugo chana bioma standard deviation at the inside. Okay? So, suppose that and you... Misfit could that I don't know. Suppose your estimated standard deviation is too low. Yeah, that draws not the standard deviation draw come on like that. I don't know if it's In other words, suppose that it was... Suppose epsilon i for one value was equal to zero. So, standard deviation is zero to draw yara ko. Okay, it's yara ko. So, bazo then this quantity here would actually be infinite and your algorithm will spend all of its time just trying to work on one datum. So, and as we know, data to cover trial on the ball. Problem is wrong. Zero is the standard deviation. Because, okay, go ahead. Yeah, uh, get that standard deviation, my bad, do I? See, don't need you to mind it. Only after you're going to do your name. But learn about doing it. See, the idea, see, they're my body, so I mean. Because we're trying to minimize this misfit. And if <coughs> some data have assigned standard deviations that are too low, then the algorithm will continue to try to fit those points and that will not provide the best outcome. So I uh, standard deviation the unable to look in the mess or Good, but this is a very, very important question. And every time we do an inversion, that is the first question that comes up. What should I estimate for my errors? Okay. So now let's come back to our oh four. What happened there? want to solve the inverse problem. And remember I said that there were two, co two components of this, that we've got our data misfit and then we also have our uh, other knowledge. So I don't know the tech things in that I'm going to the data misfit was in that way. The people who are going to be in that way, the people who are So we're going to 
formulate the inverse problem. Formulate the inverse problem. To add both of these together. So here's our data misfit. Uh, data misfit, everybody. Yeah, so it looks like this. It's sort of what we've been, been writing. Okay, so it's observed minus predicted divided by the standard deviation, all squared sum up. All squared sum up sum up. Go on, cut them, you know. Bound challenge now. All right, standard, it was a uh, standard division. It's a miss, 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 fit, no? Miss fit, we are much about it. You're not going to have your formula, all right? And then we have our geologic knowledge. This first term here is just our, we want to make a solution that's close to a reference model. Uh, you know, the, uh, yare had the reference models or you don't look to really uh, go car you try to model but we want to come on time more than it probably needs a less route you know around touch it up to buy and the second term here is we don't want it too wiggly yeah you tell like that like the general load in it to jump below we have to be a half hour to buy so we don't need to worry about the details of this just the concept so there's a first term that tries to make things close to a reference model and a second term which tries to make it smoother. smoother. And we're going to put those together with uh, coefficients. This is an alpha sub s. Alpha sub s. Yeah. And here's an alpha sub x. X. Yeah. So these are just two numbers. Point number one. Number one. Number one. Yeah. So we've got something here, something here, and we're going to weight them. So depending on these. Uh, number. Uh, again, you know, the shape. Again, you know, Okay. So we're getting almost there. We have a way to quantify our misfit. And we have a, a way to quantify our model. So, for the formula, we have misfit. For the example, we have to get the model, 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 we have to get the Here's the parameters that uh, you will play with. So the first thing, there's something called a mode, which means either you can run or explore. So this will become clearer later on because we're, when we run it, we're going to do iterations. One, two, three, four, five, six, dot, dot. <coughs> but then after it's run, we want to just explore, like, what does things look like at iteration 4 or iteration 7. So here's, here's the buttons. If you want to run the inversion, you press this. After you've run the inversion, you press explore, and then then you're just looking at the results. So the run is you know inversion logo is a run hey biro inversion logo are biro ma not touch an object in a kind of explore hey biro ma okay the result of the zero you have the one thing that I hadn't talked about here is that we have. Uh, an optimization problem we're going to minimize this which is the sum of our data misfit and our <coughs> model objective function or our model size Mi so minimize. that was so remember we have two things uh, like yeah so we've got our misfit uh -huh. and we would like to we would like to make that small 
Miss Fit will enter the next one. Nay, 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 our model, uh, our model norm, model then we want to make this small. We want to make something that's close to a reference, and we want to make the amount of jiggleness so small. So the misfit, so, we want to make this small and we want to make this small. That so, that could be hard to do. How we're going to tackle the problem is take the sum of these, but we're going to weight them with the parameter beta. So I have you the bound tail like that for you. Bound tail from a bar we don't need to change too much about it. Okay. And then clearly we're going to have to adjust this value of beta until we get the right do we get something that's acceptable to us. Now so let me make that that you know change too we don't need to much about it. So we'll see this a lot. You know we have all the nine. Okay. So that's how we're setting it up. Okay, so now we're going to invert. I've talked about the mode. We have the reference model. Uh, we've got the uncertainties, a percentage, and a floor. A reference model is she day. Basan she may. Floor she may. And then we've got data. We've got observed, predicted, and misfit. About data, so you know, I did that much. The, uh, the number of, of betas here uh, is just a, a, a parameter that we can choose to see how many uh, sample, how many uh, solutions we want to see. The alpha S and alpha X are those parameters that we just talked about. Alpha zero X net to the zero. And these others are just basically plots that we will see. Yeah. So Here's, here's the values. So here's MREF is zero. Percentage and a floor, we've already done that. There's something called chi fact. I'll come back to that. We'll set that by default and equal to one. And for our, our data, we can look at the observed and predicted data, or we could look at the misfit. And here's our alphas, we're setting right now they're one and, and zero. We can ch we'll change. <coughs> And then we have some options on, on how to plot. Options so, are so you just that in my So let's uh, let's take a look. Let's have it down. So we run it, so let's explore. Explore my uh, body. So let us first look at <coughs> So we let's think about how to 
So remember the quantity that we're trying to minimize is, is this thing here, which is the misfit plus beta <coughs> times <coughs> our model. So this is our geologic noise or geologic uh, information, and this is the data misfit. But geology data body, and not with a misfit in my body. And I'll draw then as I'll draw minimize low make number and then I've got the data for that formula. Actually let me do one come back to some of these slides. Okay, so here's here's another way of, of pr presenting things. <coughs> so we're going to minimize <coughs> the sum of our data misfit and <coughs> and our model norm where this is a this is called a trade-off parameter and it's got values anywhere from zero to infinity. So <coughs> And we want to find a solution such that phi d is pretty close to what uh, acceptably fits the data. So I data, we don't draw common high data. Then I saw draw common high data. Then I saw can you draw a model? So this can be kind of tough. We have to balance things. So then you know, can't be mapped on the balance of the cool. So think about maybe think about driving a car. So you're going to go from Malamin to Yangon. Right? And on this axis here, you've got driving time. So the downlight the Majaro, Mountain but Jaji. And on this axis here, you've got fuel consumption. Okay, so now think about your, your options. You could go, uh, you could drive really fast, but if you drive really fast, you might burn up a lot of gasoline and your fuel consumption would be high. So, so on this graph here, this is like a, a trade-off graph. If you had, if you were willing to have, uh, or you wanted to have the smallest uh, amount of uh, fuel cons fuel consumption, okay, then it could take you a very long time. So if the fuel consumption is is really small, it could take you a long time. So. Uh, so this if this parameter beta is really large, then you don't you, you don't care about the about the time you're just caring about the fuel consumption and that may, might mean that you're uh, just taking a long uh, yeah you're, that you're traveling very slowly and taking a long time so I the fuel red the dusty but not dusty wait right come on now wait deep so you know I tell you my job so you know the piece if you need to so you know on the other hand, on the other hand, if beta was equal to zero, then the only thing you care about is time, and so you just push your foot to the gas pedal, you're going as quickly as you can, and you get there as fast as you can, but you've used a lot of fuel. 
So that's it for my game. So I will add that's it for my Istanbul. So I zero to ten million. So I'm going. Oh, I tell you, but now I'm going to now I'm sure. So now, the family man, 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 the family man. I do all of it. So that's that's the trade-off. Um, what's what's the best what's the best thing to do? Where how, how do you make a decision about where where to go? So I don't know. Morning, don't mess with. Oh, morning, yeah. Oh, mount, come on, mess with. But don't you come mess with. Come on, dinner, blue shirt, mess with. Because that's the thing. Come on, chat, lose. Baby, 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 lady, mount, don't mess with. Chat, I chat, mess with. No, you get it now. That's the thing. Come on, chat, lose. Okay, good. Yeah? What? Uh, someone said, like, they care about time, so that's ah. minimize the time. Some right. people say it's both. Minimize both. Right, so if, if we minimize the time, Okay, then we're out here. So this is time on this side. So then we're out here. So we use huge amounts of fuel consumption. So change show me, so no, that's it. I don't know why the is not happening. So that that might not be very good if it, you know, if you have to have 400 gallons of fuel to get there. So expensive. Gallon Lee, I love the one way. Focus on the I don't know. So no, that they go me. She she will not do. Okay. A anybody else? But I, I like the idea of time. Both. both, yes, right. So maybe you need to have like a, a, a specific cri criterion. So let's. So th maybe the question is, why are you going to Yangon? Well, maybe you have a family dinner. So general, So it's. Uh, Eight o'clock in the morning, and you want to be there by four o'clock in the afternoon to be at the dinner. So, so that means you could find like eight hours on here. You could draw a line here, and, and that's your target value. So your target time is eight hours, and therefore you you'd want to uh, you know, work with this amount of fuel consumption, so that you spent the least amount of fuel to get there in eight hours. So I eight hours with your so you know, no okay, that's the Okay, so that's that's the idea, and you'll see this a lot through all inversions. We've always got two objectives. We've got we want to fit the data, but then we've got these other constraints of geology, and we want to kind of minimize the complexity of the geology. So So on, on this case here, if our target value, well, let's, I've got two hours here, but so I suppose it's two hours, then this is sort of an optimum point. You use the minimal amount of fuel consumption and you're there in two hours. So that would not be right. That would not be right. So now let's apply that same thing to here. Uh, Let's actually just go through this. So the way in which we're going to tackle this is by successive by starting with a big beta. So we're going to start with a large beta and therefore only be concerned with this 
uh, this term here. So if beta is large, then we're not very concerned about the misfit. Okay. So we're gonna we're gonna this uh, we're gonna minimize this, but we're gonna start off with a very large value of beta. So minimize the log to the beta number that t is some. Okay. So now watch what happens. T man. So here we have the model that we're looking for. And at iteration one, where we've got uh, a very large beta, here's our predicted model. So beta number And then here's the here's the predicted data, and here's the observations. So so we do a terrible job. Uh, this axis is the misfit. So misfit And on this axis we're plotting the model norm. Uh, the model norm, the size of the model. Okay, and for this particular beta, we're starting up up here. So beta is number the kuga pozo ma. Okay. But number one is number one Now we're going to decrease. Uh, we're going to change beta, and then we're going to see what happens as we. Uh, progressively get better here and better results there. Maybe this is maybe this is a better one. Okay, so now I'm going to increase or decrease beta. I've changed the plot. This one might be easier. So um, on this axis, we now have beta. So beta. And we're starting off with a very high beta. Beta mean the Okay. And you see the green dot? That tells us what the value of, of, of beta is. And on this axis, we have the misfit. So as I reduce beta, then I'm going to get slightly better uh, predictions between the observed and predicted, and that'll get better on the model. So we so haven't got. But look at this. So now I'm at iteration 10. And so beta is down. Is 19. Was it 19? Yeah. Iteration 19. Um, this is the value of, of beta here. So we're reducing the misfit. So misfit goes short time. And you can see we've done a so we're, we're, we're better here. We're trying to get to the black dots. And we've got the blue. And you can see we're starting to get some information about this feature here <coughs> and that feature. So I read Okay, so we're we're doing better. So let's do, but let's make beta smaller. Let's keep producing. See, so now the value of beta is here, and the misfit has considerably uh, got better. So the observed and predicted are looking like this. And this is actually not 
you know, we're starting to pick things out, right? We, I mean, maybe if you thought about this in the aquifer, if this is depth, then maybe there's, you know, a near surface aquifer and then maybe something a little bit deeper. So, do I tell aquifer or shallow? But maybe it's an okay aquifer. Then you drink, drink, no, no, no. Thing, then she may never find a she, she is with how you are. Okay, so now let's go a couple more. I want to stop here. So here's a result uh, that is, it will come out as a default result usually in, in the programs. And this horizontal dashed line here is the expected value of the misfit given the uncertainties that you applied. <coughs> you mean the, the dotted lines? Yep. So I and the I no send a send a look at the entity. Misfit with yeah line on. Huh? So remember the misfit phi D is the sum I equal one to N. di predicted minus di observed divided by epsilon i <coughs> squared. If you have the correct answer, if you have the true value, then this quantity in here, the misfit, divided by the standard deviation should be a Gaussian random variable with zero uh, mean and unit uh, standard deviation. Formula. Yeah. So go, go ahead. Yeah, it's, it's fine. If they don't understand, yeah. they don't understand. But say, say the word. So what I'm saying is if, the, if you have a solution so that you had the, well, that the predicted that model were, were e equal to the real true, true data, mm -hmm. then that difference divided by the standard deviation, standard deviation would be a Gaussian random variable with zero mean and unit standard deviation. Zero mean and unit standard deviation. Mean is like average. So zero average. The standard deviation is one. Standard deviation uh, did look you missing. Gaussian at zero than one. Okay, and why is that important? Because statistically, there is an expected value for this. So if I if I did the whole process many 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 times, and then I looked at what the expected value <coughs> of phi d is, then I find that is approximately equal to n the number of data. So I'm up. What is that? Uh, e, what's that? E is a? Oh, the expected value. So that's, you could kind of think of that as the average. So the expected value of random variables x, i is 1 over n x, i. Flip a coin ten times. The expect the expectation. The expected value is equal to five heads. Flip a coin. Okay. Heads tails. If there's bills here, there's no points. Oh yeah. That's true. The culture, sir. Good point. We can. Yeah. It's a kind of possibility. Yeah. So it's a possibility. If I took everybody in this room, and I said what is the average height of everybody, then you'd, you'd know what to do, right? You'd measure each person, find the, uh, find the average value, okay? And then you could also, so that would be the mean or the expected value. And then the variance of that or the standard deviation could be obtained by looking at the differences between that mean value and each person. So you know, got the mean value generally the median temporal or average. But most of the generally the kind of machine that you really get 
So I would say that the expected value, if I look at it, everybody in here, I'd say that the expected value of the height of people here is five feet seven inches. Is that close? <laughs> I say, okay, so that would be my expe expectations, five feet seven <laughs> Okay, so the expected value of this misfit, okay, is approximately equal to the number of data. Okay, look, I'm, I'm summing up here, I've got this stuff in here, if I've done everything correctly and I've got a good standard deviation, then the expected value of this number is equal to and the number of data. Data number, the uh, number of number of data. Yeah. So I'm for here for phi d, I'm measuring the sum of these differences divided by standard deviation and squaring. So I've got this. i got this thing here. You could calculate it. I know. Third line. Third line. Third third line. I oh. And that's not too bad. So that's what come on. Have the expected solution. Net double. And that's not near to the other. Okay. So, I, so now this is, this is good. Now I've I've at least got on this axis of misfit some number that like okay. That's kind of what I'm expecting to have for a good result. So the result comes to that. So come on, we'll change to that one. And that number is, is sitting here. And that's not bad. Look at here's, yeah, here's the true here's the true model. Here's the recovered model. And you know, we've got energy here, energy here. And, and then look at the fit to the data. It's, yeah, it's not too bad. It's, it's not great, but it's not too bad. So at this point, you could think, oh, I've solved my inverse problem. So I say, okay, the inverse Here's here's what I think the Earth is like. Here's my fit to the data. Okay, so we've solved our inverse problem. So that's the inverse problem. Inverse But we could, we could maybe do better because we notice that um, we could reduce the misfit here you know, a little bit more and not, uh, well, we could reduce this misfit a little bit more and, and see what we got. So let's change the data. So let's change beta. So now we're actually, we're, we're reducing beta a little bit more, and you can see this is actually a better solution, right? We got a little bit closer here, and the misfit is it, it is better. So this. <coughs> so one might think that why don't we just keep reducing beta? So what's, watch what happens as I decrease beta. So the more I decrease beta, the better my fit between my observations and predicted data will be. 
So what do you think about that? Still okay? So remember, as this green dot goes down, we're reducing the misfit. So misfit will show time enough to buy it. So these are these the blue and the black are getting closer. Okay. So now keep miss keep going down. So bottle. So now watch what happens to the model. See how the model is changing? So the model is now changing, but we're not really making any difference in the misfit. We, we're fitting the data but as well as we can do. And look what's happened to the model. The model is garbage. <laughs> <laughs> At this point, all we're doing is overfitting the data. We're fitting the noise. So that the that the fitting overfitting the overfitting fitting full blow. Yeah, overfitting them. If you look at the at just fitting the data, you'd say, ah, good job, look at this. But you've overfit the data. And now here's the model that you get. It's just like this. It's complete garbage. So you, you need to guard against that. This is totally un unacceptable. You've done all this work to invert the data, but the choice of the per trade off parameter means that you've overfit the data and you now have a very poor result. So, the uh, data you overfit the data, the yarded result is the one that you try to So, you can see that. Play around the other curve that we will use a lot is called the Tikhonov curve. Tikhonov curve, and that's a plot of phi d against phi m. So phi d and phi m, see me. And as when beta is very large, we are up up here, and then the character of this curve is such that. If we if we reduce phi d without increasing phi m the structure, then we're probably getting s working with signal in the data. So phi d will show up. Show up, man. Phi n got two more thousand. No, and I think was that uh, the, the last one you said. Uh, if you reduce, uh, if you go down, if you if you if you, yeah, So if phi d is changing, but phi m is not increasing. Then we're not putting. Then we're, we're we're probably still working with signal in the data. Signaling. Si signal like good stuff in the data. So what we could probably take a break. That's a lot. That's a lot of stuff. Okay. So the plan is we'll take a short break. Coco, uh, we forgot to ask you to uh, print out the slides. not the slides. Well, the slides too, but the uh, question. Right. They're they're on the course. Can it, can people access? The course.
waiting. Okay, so can, can everybody access the GSI uh, cor yeah, course and start GSI on XYZ? No. Okay, then you have course material. Well, course material is blah, blah, blah. And then here's here's where we are. The the linear inversion and the nonlinear inversion and the parametric inversion are up there for slides. So maybe we don't need to print these out anymore. Uh, I don't know. It actually would be nice. Then you could write on. Them. Uh, where's our uh, Oh here questions. So here's the questions on linear inverse theory. Linear inverse theory, never got the question. So what I'd like you will have a little break and then I want you to come back and open up my binder and download the inversion app and then step through uh, this question. So basically what this question is, is I've asked you to, to generate a model. So, so the first part with all the kernels and stuff, we'll leave that for now, just use that as a default. Then I want, to gen I want you to generate a model and data. So you're just going to use a box car. And then you're going to assign noise. And then you're going to then go ahead and add noise and carry through the inversion and we'll repeat the same thing where you're going to try to recover the box car and get garbage out. So the product of break development and break got the deadline message on my bed that trying down a point below and the inversion app will download a bit about it being the machine that how the step to a lot of validity model. Everything that you do here is exactly what you will do for when we give you the 1D DC resistivity inversion code as well as the 2D DC resistivity. Okay, so let's, uh, let, let's take a short break, maybe 15 minutes. And then uh, try to do the exercise.